shit, god damn it. <clears throat> well, anyway. What's up guys, this is Gearwolf. We're going back to Pile on Earth. A, uh, I, uh, last time, oh god, this is a horrible one. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, fuck, what was I going to say? God, you know what? Last time, our waifu was not confident. I I really fucked that up. Uh, fucking angel. Shit. Anyway. I felt the sheer rumble with impact of another mass meteoroid. I shivered. Was I going to die here? The long, infinite, infinite vastness of space? That's gonna suck if you're gonna die alone. Oh well, shit, I guess you'll never make it. No one would care. Mm. I don't know. I mean, what happened to your family, bro? Where are they at, huh? No one would ever find me. Oh, that's true. It's like a vastness of missing person's case. Maybe I'll end up drifting out, out here forever. That scared me more than anything else. You're gonna die alone. Be hot, freaking. Hope you have enough food, bro. Food and water. Probably not. <sighs> Put my seat vibrates. Wait, can you see vibrates? Well, I guess that's a new feature. My hands feel instinctively to collapse your armrest, attempting to keep myself steady. Grr. The entire room was shaking. I felt like the hardness was were about to rip apart. Kachunk! Oh shit! <laughs> well, you're fucked, man. Like a rag doll, I was falling back into my seat, sinking further and further into the stiff leather. Wait, can you even. I don't even know if that's possible. I couldn't move my head. The pressure was too forceful. Alright. I simply started out the front of the cockpit as I saw it shoot forwards. Saw what? The cockpit? We definitely j just been jettisoned. Oh, okay. Wow, that's a little forceful, isn't it? The, the cockpit is. Small pebbles posted the windshield, but, but I didn't care. I was ecstatic, laughing myself in giddy joy. The way it was clearing out up. The program had managed it. We were going to make it. We oh, oh no, what what's going on? We were hit by a normal. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Slam! Our car were hurled through space, spinning erratic erratically from the scrap of the me meteoroid. I clenched to my seat for dear life, feeling the G-force press me into the, my seats. Oh, well, can you really feel that? You would have to have, like, artificial gravity in that, in that little shell of yours, only to feel it. I'm pretty sure. A copy of one straight in flashing lights and infographic display displays was on stage shrouded in a suffocating curtain of darkness. The only line caught in chaotic glimpses of the stars through the windshield. I went as the sea straps dug into my chest, the only thing keeping me from a hard collision with the windshield. Felt nauseous. The might of the centrifugal force was crushing the way, the very air from my lungs. I strained to look to my side, where the navigator had previously been, fiercely pecking away at the interfaces to salvage a wreck of a transit shuttle. The logical part of me understood what it was up to, operating inside circuitry and wiring. But I still felt a wave of dread overcome me. What if it didn't work? What if the navigator failed? God, don't, don't, don't say that, bro. Don't freaking say it. What if we didn't manage to store the power while well, there was another breach in the hall? I had become shuffling in this emptiest expanse mankind have ever known. You really have to be like that. St st stop. Look on the positive side. Jesus. I was trapped, good as dead, and this was my grave. A coffin of glass and sparking electricity circuitry. It would preserve my final moments. A dying expression on my face as I suffocated and froze in the vacuum of space. In space, Mel can hear you scream. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I mean, that's gonna be a lot of years until someone finds your ass. It was a quiet quote from an old ancient story they told to kids. 
Perhaps it would have been okay for me to scream here, but not a single utterance escaped from my lips. My throat tightened as I came to terms with the gloomy shadow of death over and over. This ain't no freaking valley of death, goddammit. You'll be fine. It's plot convenient, something will save you. I closed my eyes, ready to accept my fate, and here comes the fucking plot convenience. <laughs> My eyes shut open as the cockpit rumbled back to life. The cloak of darkness was cut to ribbons by the various displays stuttering back to life. Flashing real light planted the control board, indicated that something was a mess. Oh God. Don't worry, flashing light. Wait, don't worry, flashing light. I noticed. Um. Grammar. Right? Maybe? I don't know. Is that, is that supposed to be intentional? I don't freaking know. It just didn't make any sense. The operating system booted up before my eyes, green code buzzing across a hovering black screen faster than my human eyes could hope to process. Oh, fuck that. Nope. Preamble. Enabling database access. Jesus. Applesoft. Is it kind of like Microsoft? Probably. Standard time slice and quantum is 10,000 us. Alright. Three pages, wired. Did this mean the ship was coming back to life? I don't know what the hell is going on! No, oh, she looks so happy. It's so cute. Suddenly, a flash of white light. I'm here, I'm here. My deepest apologies for taking so long. Ah! Soft chime. Too soft to give in there. Present circumstances signal the return of the intelligent body. I twisted my head in distraction, scrambled for the controls. It seemed to hesitate for a moment, almost nervous, almost wincing. She looked tired. So, er, pardon my common man in common man's language. Jeez. But the hell's going on? That that ah ah. The stabilizing subsystems have to be recalibrated. Emergency thrusters from being seated will be undergoing a little turbulence until before the AI could provide me with an estimate and the cockpit lurch forward. She's just so cute like that. She's an AI. It's not possible. I know this. Ah! I know he's bad there. Feeling the rocket in the cockpit in the pit of my stomach. Eyes of the navigator reflected the glow of the flickering countless holographic screens. It swiped frantically through the fl flowing diagrams of schematics and forms. Just one minute. It seemed to yell its response. I opened my. She yelled? Oh, oh okay. No. Opened my jaw to respond, but in this state, it was pointless to yell, it, yell at it. The cockpit scene still felt like it was swirling in schematics and sheets upon sheets of code only made my scrap mind ache even more. Ugh, I'm not feeling so hot. It'll be fine. Please remain seated. Come on. Mm. Hey, there's no need to shout. I'm not shouting. <laughs> I'm not shouting. <laughs> That piece of cried me. He jumped a good two feet. Do you have that? Do you have any room? Like two feet? Or at least it would have had that number. Sure, see, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I'm not shouting. There was something different about the program. Oh, oh, oh. What about? What's the difference, man? Why was it yelling at me now? She's probably tired, bro. I mean, she had to work hard for your ass and her ass. Even when we were in the midst of the debris storm, it was calm, orderly, and procedural. Sure was firm and tense, but only in a professional matter. <laughs> Looking at it now, I scrambled to make a key adjustment. Frantic movements. It was most certainly panicking. Well, she wasn't confident before, bro. Normal for human luck in the face of the netherworld. But an artificial intelligence was different. 
AIs had to remain calm in all circumstances. They even had a sentient limitation codex, co codex. Chips inside of, inside of them that suppress sentient and emotional behavior. Maybe this one was just some sort of scenario the person who had it had never been programmed for. Ping! Another chime rang out. The obnoxious red light turned green. Did she pull it off? I felt the G-forces previously pinned my body to my seat ebbed away. Until finally I found it. Found I could move comfortably. The stars beyond stopped their fluttering spinning. It seemed up our course was finally got cautious of stability subsystems returned to partial effectiveness. The eye next next to me beamed proudly. The worst seemed to have, to have passed. Well for now, bro, for now. I groaned wearily, raising my right hand to massage my shoulder. Yeah, my hand was so tough. Oh, my hand was so sore. I was aching all over. Yeah, I got a, got a tent. Un easel, got to ease those muscles, man. Oh, I, I had, I've been forced through a chair so many times. As I cracked my neck, <laughs> I found myself face to face with the program at the helm. There was something different in my eyes now. I couldn't quite tell what it is. It was abstract, almost emotional. The girl was staring at me. Oh, what is it, bro? What is it, girl? What'd you get? Oh, really? They gave me like that. All right. Uh. So we're good now. I was not quite sure what her eyes seemed to be asking. I was still not she was a a construct. I felt all kinds of weird to being stared at so closely. Like that. maybe she just wants to know more about you, bro. Well, I'm not a woman, so I wouldn't even know. So. I don't even know if you're a guy or a girl, but I'm putting myself in new shoes, so you're going to be a guy this time. That was a question. The AI continued gazing at me for a moment, and then nodded. Yes, the stabilizing substance was functioning at this point, as well as the artificial gravity, but I'm still unable to replot our course. I'm not quite sure how far we're spawned away, I think it might might even be in our charted space, oh god. We would even make it to our destination, that's all I care about. But well, regardless, as soon as the stabilizer system returns to full stream, we should be able to regain situ situational awareness and head off on our way. Yeah, I explained all this concisely as I continued to study it closely. I raised my eyebrows in response. Yeah, is something wrong? Something on my face? I, I, oh, she's been noticed. Guys, watch out, she's been noticed. Oh, God. She was looking at your husband. Oh. Well, anyway, I think it's been enough time for me to do this, so we're going to have to say goodbye.